Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. Today is part two of getting the S3 ready for the MOT. Now, this video has been shot over a number of days and you can tell that by the fact that you'll see me wearing different t-shirts in different shots. That's how long it's taken to get this car sorted. So when we first started this, we had eight days to go. Now it is Sunday afternoon. So the MOT is booked for tomorrow, Monday the 17th. So um, in this episode, we have to fix our seat belts. We got to replace the windscreen and we have to finally get those headlights sorted. Will we get all those jobs done? find out as we go through today's episode. But while we're here, you've probably seen I'm wearing some new merch, um, some t-shirts that's now available in the store. So I'll see the link below. We've got some different t-shirts, just plain without all the logos, but just with this logo as well and some really good colors. So if you fancy getting one of those, check out the store below and um, browse through and let me know what you think. Right, so the first job we're gonna tackle is the seat belts. So we have to replace both seat belts because both have gone off and we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so it's seat belt day. So we're gonna replace both of our seat belts with these two replacement candidates. And I'll show one side because the other side will be exactly the same. And since we've got a seat out of here, it's gonna be easier to show you this side. So we'll get the seat belts in and once we get the seat belts in, we can then clear some coats. Okay, so the airbags are now sorted for the seat belt so we can put the battery back on. And yes, that is the positive. It's the only reason why I've taken the positive and not the negative off like you would normally do is that the negative is really hard to disconnect, whereas the positive is right there. Okay, let me show you the seat belts. Okay, so both sides are now done. So these are new seat belts on that side and the same on this side, which we did off camera. So we now need to just update the um, ECU to tell it that it's got new seat belts. But before we do that, we need to fit the seat. So let's go and get the seat and fill it in the car. So it is now at this point that I now need a specialist to sort out the headlights. Now, I spoke to three different companies. Um, the first two, the first company just didn't give me any confidence whatsoever. The second company I got from uh, another YouTuber who did some work for him and he made an attempt, but I kind of got the impression some way through it that it was a little bit out of his depth uh, and then after the first attempt and we spent a good couple of hours um, it was very difficult to get hold of him uh, um, and so I kind of uh, gave up now I I 
I understand the systems on the car and that it uses the CAN bus 2 network. So CAN bus is controller area network, runs a little bit like a, com a computer network. So you have various modules and they all talk via a bunch of cables rather than the thousands of cables that you would need for a modern day production car. It uses a similar cable like a network cable and that way all the ECUs can talk to each other pretty much like a computer. So I kind of understood what he was doing, but he um, just didn't get far enough. So then the third company um, who um, I've used was um, VAG Coding Specialist. That's the name of the company. You'll see their logo up there right now. Um, the guy who uh, runs that company, Baz, absolute genius. So we spent the first session and you'll see on screen now some of the screenshots and um, we spent a little bit of time um, a good hour or so trying to fix the issue but it didn't work so this is what we found or this is what I found after the session ended okay so we have our VAG specialist connected to the car what we have had to do is connect the car to the battery because a lot of battery is actually fine on the car because we have to have the ignition on um, it drains the battery after about an hour or so so you can see we've got our power we've got a laptop on there and I've got our guy he's currently connected via my screen you probably can't see it because the sun's reflecting but he's currently connected via my screen and he's uploading some software so that he can um, sort out my issue. So the service that this company offer, um, they're based in London. Uh, I'll put a link to them at the bottom of the description. But what they do is they log on to your car and then remotely um, diagnose the issue using um, Odis Engineering, which I have got a copy of, but I don't know how to use in anger so I've got these guys to do it for me after spending a good couple of hours this is what we think the problem is this is a headland headlight range controller it's a mini computer or a BCM body control module and what this does is it tells the headlights what lights it needs to turn on so this one we tried to communicate with it several times he tried to upload some software to it and it just wouldn't take the software and it was exhibiting similar symptoms of what we were seeing in vcds so i think this is the suspect this is what i've suspected for quite a while now you can get these on ebay there's quite a few of these however i need a specific model number so this the part number is 7P690757B. If you look on eBay, there's loads of them. But you do need a specific software version, and that's that top number here. So that's what I need to order. And then there is a version number, a 0230. Now there's two of these. There's a one for matrix headlights. Mines aren't matrix, mines are LED. So the matrix ones are 240, and the uh, standard LEDs are 230, which is what mines are here. So to replace this little unit, I thought it was £400, it's actually cheaper, but nonetheless, not that much. It's uh, £234 from Audi, um, but they can get this pretty much straight away. So I've ordered it and I will be collecting a new one very shortly. 72 hours later. Okay, so the new part has arrived. Here's the old one. That's the one that I was showing you. And the new one is now plugged into place. You can see that just there. That's the reason why I had all of this apart because I knew I suspected this for a long time that the headlamp module was the issue. So now we've got the new one in place. This is now dumb. So none of my lights work at all um, because the car doesn't know how to um, interface with it. And the whole point of using Odis is that you teach the car what each function does as you and and you and then you upload the um, engine code not the engine code the um code coding so the car retains it into the ecu so that's happening tonight hopefully if all goes well the next time you see this we'll be able to um all our lights will be working the next morning Hooray! 
So, as you saw from that clip, we got the lights sorted. So the car is now fixed, the lights are all fixed, and we are one step closer to the MOT being done. So the only thing I've got to do now is just get the old uh, windscreen sorted, and then we are in a good place. So, um, again, I'm going to recommend VAG Coding Specialist Baz. He was fantastic, knew his beans, knew exactly what he was doing, and as a result, that's the reason why the headlights and all the lights on this car are now working properly. So with just a final thing to go, I think we're in a good place to get this car MLT'd and pass. The MLT is now booked for Monday. Um, so um, yeah, we're in a really good place. So the, the final thing that I'm going to do is we're just gonna run through the codes to make sure that all the codes are clear because that will ensure that uh, we have a clean dashboard. But I'm so over the moon about the lights because that was a real big issue. If we couldn't get that fixed, then that was gonna cause us some problems. Okay, so we are in the car now. So we've got the ignition on. We can see that we've got our airbag lights on down there. What we're gonna do now is we're going to run uh, and it's basically I've scanned these are all the issues that the car has found some of these are not issues they're just the fact that they are because I've disconnected the battery so these will always come up what we're then now going to, to going to do is clear all the DTCs and then we'll see what we got left so we are going to do that now okay so it's going to run through this whole process and clear all of these scans and then we'll come back to it okay so we have just run the scan again we found the error with the airbag and that's now been fixed all it was was the crash sensor was disconnected so I've connected it back up and it's now fixed so we're now left with what you can see on screen so I'm expect we're gonna clear these DTCs and what I'm expecting to see left is this one here which is the um, air conditioning because there is no refrigerant in the system so it's going to report that as a low. So let's clear these codes and let's see if we can finally get this car to come back clean. So it's going to go through the process, clear all the codes that it has now telling me that all the DTCs are cleared so if we go back and there we go we have a clean sheet in the exception of the HVAC and if we look at that error code for that you'll see that it is reporting that the refrigerant pressure is too low that's because there isn't any refrigerant so this car is now fixed and to confirm that, if we look on the dashboard, we will see that we have no airbag light. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the key off. Okay, we're zooming. I'm gonna turn the key back on. We should see all our lights come on as normal and then go off. And now if I start the car, battery's a bit low, so we need to go for a little bit of a drive. But other than that, we have no errors on the dashboard, which is perfect. So the only thing left to fix is this dash, is this um, windscreen, which is cracked. And I'm going to call somebody to get that in. And then we can put the car in for its MOT at last. Okay, so the car has been in to have its uh, windscreen replaced at uh, Auto Windscreens. So I'm just going to go and collect it now and uh, hopefully it's all going to be done. And here it is, all done, no windscreen, boy, it's a nice actually. Okay, let's go and pay for this thing. So it's been eight months and 13 days since we started the S3 project and it has been probably one of the most uh, 
what's the word I'm going to use here? Um, certainly not the longest project that I've ever done, but the car and the amount of work that we've done, I now have this affinity with that car in the sense that I know every single nut and bolt and um, it's been a pleasure doing the car and it's taken longer than I expected it to and coronavirus was certainly a massive factor in that because everything shut down and for three months we couldn't get any parts etc couldn't get into the paint shop so the car did lay dormant while we were looking at other projects so but it's been a, a labor of love really getting it to where it is now and to drive it now is just a real pleasure so I want to thank the following people who made this possible. Uh, Lee from Woodville Stretton Paint Shop, he did me a fantastic deal. Um, literally half price to get the whole front of the car painted uh, as a thank you for all the work that I've given him over the, um, the, the last 18 months or so. Uh, Lee Drake from Drake Trimmings who did the seat, he done a really good job on that as well that's really uh, appreciative and last of all baz from um vag tuning specialists uh, who without baz we wouldn't be taking the car from mot on monday because he was the only one who was able to fix it out of the three companies that i tried and they were the best and he was just so professional in the way that he did that again all of those companies i've put their links below um because they are worthy and we like to support our local businesses so thank you again for all your work so what's next now well obviously the car will be going in for an MOT and no doubt half of you will be looking up the MOT status to see if it will um, pass and by the time you've seen this video it would have either passed or failed so you'd know it anyway um, obviously the car will come back it is now my daily and that's now when the mods will start and we've got a couple of mods in already so we've got a race chip uh, mods to add on there i've had that for months now we just haven't had a chance to do anything with it because i wanted to get the car fixed and in a state where everything was working before we started messing with um, the ECU again and the car is in a pretty good state there's still a couple of jobs that i'm not going to bore you with that need to be done um, I may even change the wheels on that car because the 19s that I have, they're slightly the wrong profile, but that's another story. Um, so yeah, the mods will come. But before then, we've got the Q5 and we also have the Fiat 500, which is back. Yes, the uh, 500 is back from the paint shop and uh, Wayne, our new painter, he's done a really good job on this car, actually, I'm really impressed. So, um, but more of that in an upcoming episode. Good, so I hope you have enjoyed this series. Uh, the I will go through the numbers. I promise you I will go through the numbers, but just not today. Today is more a sort of coming of age in terms of getting the car ready and finished, etc. And I'm waffling on a lot now, aren't I? But yeah, we've, we're gonna start the mods very soon in a, in, a, in a very near episode. I'm also gonna fit the number plates that uh, I got from MDW plates and uh, you'll see those going on as well as part of that. So I hope you have enjoyed that. Pick up some merch from my merch store if you're interested. Like I said, we got some new designs now, just simple logo designs. And um, so if you want to um, support the channel, then that's a good way of doing that. So in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe down here and give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed these series and what we're doing on this channel. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you very soon on the next one. Have a good week.